Stick around for the end of this video for my secret substitution for oil and butter. If you guys have ever heard anybody say that baking is an exact science, people usually say that for a few different reasons. Most people, when they say that, are talking about that you need to be pretty careful that you have pretty exact measurements in baking, but also, baking really is a science. It has a lot to do with the proteins and the fats and the sugars and how those all play together, and also it has to do with ratios your ratio from protein to fat, and from liquid to solid, and all that different stuff. Now let's talk eggs. So eggs obviously come in different sizes. There's small, medium, large, and extra large. So you might want to weigh them out if you were using any type of alternative. Eggs in your recipe act as a binder. So really anything that could act as a binder would be fine to substitute out for eggs. A lot of people use applesauce or a mashed up banana. I've seen people use sweetened condensed milk. Obviously use any vegan egg replacer. And you can also use tofu or ground up flaxseed as well. So let's talk about custard for a minute. In a custard, like a creme brulee, cheesecake, pudding, panna cotta, and others, eggs are very important. They have proteins in them that will thicken when they're heated and give your custard that smooth texture. Because of this, things like applesauce are not going to cut it. But things like tofu or sweetened condensed milk work very well. Next on the list is sugar. Sugar in a baking recipe is just the sweetener. So really whatever sweetener you want to use is fine. I've seen dates used. You will use honey or maple syrup or any um, of the artificial sugars out there. The one thing to note about artificial sugars is that typically they're a lot sweeter than your typical sugar. So you're going to want to just add less of that sugar than you would of regular sugar. Say you were using a cup of regular sugar, you're just going to use about two thirds of a cup of artificial sugar. Just one thing to note, um, if you're using Splenda or Stevia in your baking, those tend to be a little bit grainy. So I typically don't use those. I try it once and I just, it gives it a weird texture that I personally don't like. You can try it and see if you like it. I don't know, uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> So now let's talk about the difference between butter and oil in baking and which one's better. This is one of those things that it really depends on what you're making. So the main difference between vegetable oil and butter or any kind of oil and butter is that oil in baking is a fat liquid whereas butter would be a fat solid. So because of that, butter is going to act as a little bit of a leavening agent in your baking, whereas oil would not. So if you want something a little bit fluffier and not as dense, go with butter. And if you want something a little bit denser but a little bit moister, go with oil. That's why oil is used a lot in chocolate cakes because chocolate cake tends to be a little bit drier. So to combat that, they typically will use oil. And also butter and margarine can be used interchangeably in, ba in baking. Also the difference between oil and butter is if you put butter into your baking, you're gonna get obviously more of a buttery taste to your bacon, whereas oil would be a fat that doesn't have any taste to it. So if you want that moisture element to your bacon, but you don't want any flavor, then you would use oil. Now the different types of oil that can be used, typically my go-to oil would be vegetable oil, but I have used canola oil in place of that and it was fine. Peanut oil is typically used for frying. It's not really a baking oil. And then there's vegetable shortening, which would fall into the category of a fat 
solid, but it's not gonna give you the same taste of butter. So if you want that little bit of leavening in your baking, but you don't want the taste of butter, then go with shortening. Now, if you were using a salted butter, you wouldn't add any salt to your baking. If you're using unsalted butter, I typically will put about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt into whatever I'm baking. As promised, I'm going to be telling you guys about a secret ingredient I like to use in place of butter or oil. It's a fruit, very fatty, and it's green. Anybody know what it is? Avocado. Now I know what you're thinking, Amy, I don't really know about this. Trust me, I am not crazy. Avocado is a perfect option in place of your butter. The only difference here is that butter is kind of an unhealthy fat, whereas avocado is a healthy fat. You're still gonna get your creaminess and your richness. It's just gonna be a healthy fat that doesn't have as much flavor as butter would, but it does have a little bit of flavor. I've made brownies with this. It makes an excellent chocolate mousse. I haven't tried cake, but I don't see why you couldn't make a chocolate cake with this. I do challenge you to put butter into a cake and then put avocado into a cake and see if you can fool your friends and if they're gonna notice. That is about it. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything or if you have any other questions. Um, I kind of felt like this was kind of all over the place so I hope it made a little bit of sense. I know it's a lot of information to take in but I'm also gonna be leaving a link to my blog down in the description. I do have a blog post there um, that has all that information written down for you, so you can go and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, and I will be back next week to, to make another delicious mess with you guys. So subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that, and I will see you all next time. Bye!